start recording of part two of the live session with the HTC flyer my name is Chippy Caripad.com slash live is where we're holding the live session tonight thank you to everyone in the chat room uh, from Aziman, Basso, Ben, Custom Monte Caesar, D, Fireballs, Joe, Giga, Holly, Guy, Ging, and Zero, Jacob, Jim, Bobby, Joe, Jim, Jim, Nido, and all the Ali, Rod Father, ST127, Scooby, and all the other people that are here. Tessa Guy Voodoo, W underscore underscore. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for helping out with some of the questions that other people are asking in the chat session as well. It's really helpful. Uh, and thank you for highlighting when I make mistakes as well. That sometimes happens. Uh, in this session, then, we're going to look at the standard software on the HTC Flyer, and we're going to look at uh, the pen functionality. I think that's very important to look at. It's one of the key features of the device. We might take a look at browsing. In part three, we're, we're going to look at media. We'll do some performance tests, uh, and then we'll see how it goes. We'll want to do comparison with the Galaxy Tab, uh, and then we'll look at some apps as well that we'll, we'll download for, um, reader etc etc so if you're watching this on YouTube uh, check out part three probably part four as well we'll see see how it goes unsponsored session tonight this device is uh, one that's been uh, bought so uh, no one to thank but you guys for watching joining in um, spread the word if you can it helps a lot all right all right let's do the next part <laughs> switch the camera if my camera app works. There we go. Right then. Zoomy zoom. I'm going to try and get this on a little stand as well, which might help me. One second. I had a stand already. You know, where did I put it? It's typical. Ah, it's there with the iPad on it. So let's just bring the camera level with that. Right, so I've uh, got a standard uh, install here. I refresh the device before the session. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's a recording of a live stream at 460 by 3, 480 by 360, I believe. So it's not going to be the highest resolution video you've seen. But I hope it gives you a good idea about the device. HTC Sense on this, if you haven't seen HTC Sense, it has a nice little feature. You can put four apps on the screen uh, and then drag them into the circle and it goes straight to that app uh, when it uh, unlocks the screen. So for example, if I lock the screen again, uh, camera, boom, you're into the camera. So. That's a really uh, nice feature, I think. If you're playing uh, audio, audio shows up on the lock screen as well. Classic HTC Sense here. Um, the clock. Um, have I got uh, weather? Let's see if it's going to pick up the weather for me. And you know, that's one of the, one of the great features about HTC Sense is the way they do their weather. All, all well animated. Um, yesterday it was raining, and <laughs> it's always fun to see the wipers and the the drips running down the screen. Um, and this is uh, basically as I started up. So I haven't done anything in terms of location. It's found my location, knows the time from the network, etc., etc. Let's take a look at the the apps we've got then here, because there's a little bit more than your standard um, app suite. I have got a couple that I've pre-installed that have been left over because I think they were installed on the SD card or have just been restored uh, through Google's uh, backup channel. Adobe Reader is on here. That wasn't there to start with. Amazon MP3 was there. Calculator, calendar, camcorder, camera, car panel. So that uh, puts it into a clutter-free mode for using the car panel. I believe if you have it docked in the car panel, car dock, it starts that up as well. Clock. Connected media is DLNA. Server, we've got a dock mode, which is uh, weather and picture frame type stuff downloads as part of the browser a Facebook app pre-installed friend stream this is uh, HTC senses um, social networking streaming uh, yeah information streaming service gallery which is where you should see videos as well the Gmail app you'll see installed Google search HTC hub is where you can get uh, things like new themes HTC likes I don't even know what that is yet because I haven't used it internet is the browser and it's a slightly modified browser um, We've got kid mode, which is really nice. Uh, allows it basically offers a bunch of content which is kid friendly, and a nice little simple user interface. And you can lock the 
device uh, and prevent anyone coming out of that as well. Latitude, obviously, learn more is a link to information. Locations is HTC's location service. You can actually buy navigation, turn by turn navigation through that as well. We have standard IMAP. Uh, mail application. I'm going to show you that it is. Uh, oh, I haven't got it set up, but it is um, in in a similar way to the Galaxy Tab is. It flipped into dual pane mode when you when you go into landscape viewing. Uh, the calendar does that as well. Maps market messaging is SMS, so it's got the three G stack in here and an SMS uh, component. It hasn't got voice on this, so that's. Um, something if you've been using the Galaxy Tab or thinking about using a device for conferencing um, that, uh, that's not going to work here. Music, modified music app with, with some nice features like Grace Notes, album art download, links to Amazon stores and links, links to an HTC store as well, navigation is normal. News is uh, an RSS reader, uh, news and weather is a standard Google News and weather reader notes we'll talk about in a minute. It's a pen enabled app. PDF viewer here is a pen enabled app. We'll go into that as well. Contacts, places, Polaris Office is there. Press reader. Quick look up. This is uh, basically allows you to do Google, Wikipedia, Bing type searches all in one place. Reader is a, it's Kobo. It's a modified version of Kobo. It's very interesting because it's pen enabled. I want to show you that in a bit more detail in a minute. Google Reader I pre-installed. I reset this device, but it seems to have saved uh, applications or downloaded them again through the backup channel. Settings, setup, snap booth is a funny kind of picture um, uh, picture thing. There's my camera. We can do uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff and do effects and stuff. It only works on the Oh no, I think it works in the back camera as well. No, maybe not. It's a bit gimmicky. Good fun. Um, da -da 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 -da. Soundhound is a music recognition service. Stocks is a stocks app. Talk, task manager, and Tita, which is like Labyrinth. It's the um, game. Uh, that uses the accelerometer to control a ball going across a board and you have to avoid the holes etc etc so no Skype pre-installed in this some of you oh sorry there's another few apps here so Twitter client was pre-installed there's a transfer app voice recorder voice search watch is HTC watch this is their video streaming service and uh, I'm gonna go straight into this and show you what that's like in Germany you have a total of seven or eight video trailers to watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> That's it. It's not working. Apparently they switched it on in the UK over the last couple of days. Um, but there's nothing in Germany. And they were selling it on the German website. It's not good. So what they're advertising is not working right now. Uh, you've got quick access to the Wi-Fi hotspots, that's uh, sharing, got the weather app, I've installed WordPress and YouTube is installed here. So there was quite a lot pre-installed and I used the device for I think a couple of hours on the day I got it without installing anything because um, I basically wanted to Twitter, read some feeds, use the web, uh, upload to Flickr, the sharing component is there for that. Kobo worked off the bat for me. I have a Kobo account, downloaded some books. Everything seems to be working there re really nicely. So that's just a really quick overview of the apps. We can look at some of those in a bit more detail uh, later on, but let's just get into the pen stuff. This is really important and uh, if you haven't watched the video on umcportal.com this afternoon, which demos uh, the pen apps, do that after this because it's a uh, slightly higher res. It's still not HD, but it's uh, going to give you a better uh, resolution than this live stream does. So there's two main elements to penning. And let me just quick you, quickly take you over the pen first. It's an active pen, there's a battery in it, so be aware you'll need to carry a spare battery with you if this is critical. Two buttons on it, uh, one is an erase button, uh, one allows you to do uh, selections as well. And then we have uh, the tip, which um, it has to be pushed in very slightly before it comes before it responds uh, but it's a two-stage uh, pressure sensitive tip it's not infinitely pressure sensitive so for those of you that are using that sort of stuff for you know, artistic type work it's you're probably not gonna gonna like that very much 
Right. So and Android doesn't support pen, obviously. Um, the apps don't support pen. It's all very much uh, it's finger driven. The capacitive layer is on here, but what they've done is almost a retrofit. There's a digitizer layer been put over the top, and then HTC have put in some pen enabled applications. Where the application or the UI doesn't support pen, it does this here, and I want to demonstrate to you now. So you touch the bottom right. Uh, oh no, it's going to give me the uh, demo. Right, let's skip that demo go back to the home screen right what happens is you can take a snapshot of the screen or you can go into the memo uh, yeah the note taking device so you take a snapshot of the screen and that's not the screen that is a snapshot of the screen that then you can scribble on and that is all you can do with most things in Android and I really mean most things because most things aren't pen enabled. Uh, you've got uh, various types of pen, you can do some highlighting, uh, like I said you've got uh, two pressure sensitive uh, layer layers, you've got this one's doing thin and thick. Uh, you can go back, you can toggle the changes that you've done and you can bin the changes as well. And then if you press with your finger, which is kind of a disconnect really, you do need your finger as well, you can share that that effectively a JPEG I think it is uh, through the sharing subsystem so to Flickr or through email or Twitter or whatever else you're using to share and that's how it works in most places and it's pretty simple and it's kind of it's kind of usable I, I take screenshots on the Galaxy Tab quite a lot uh, and use those to to send to people so that has has some use I have to agree the only problem is if you haven't got the pen with you you can't take a screenshot. The only thing that triggers the screenshots on the HTC flyer is the pen. So if you haven't got the pen, you can't do the screenshot. Let's uh, show you how that works in uh, an app. So let's go to uh, let's go to Google Reader here. Uh, accept that. We want to use this account. Authorize. Authorize. It's signing in. Uh, so right uh, here we go and actually if you touch the screen with the pen it takes a snapshot so now I can do that I can't do anything else I can't press the buttons to select anything I can press the erase button so you want to see that erasing stuff works and then so that's how it works with standard apps I think you get the idea of that right and that's the simple bit the good bit is the four and I think there's four main apps that I need to show you now now this is going to take about 15 minutes I think to go through these apps and I think it's really important I will try and uh, watch the chat session in the background but I think Guy is gonna um, try and capture questions as well so if you've got questions in this section drop them in the chat channel Guy will pick them up give them to me over a back channel and we'll try and answer those um, after, at the end of the session right uh, Jacob K is going to join in about 10-15 minutes as well. Let's start with the note-taking app. Right, note-taking app. Note. Whoops. Let's. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I've got my camera on. Right. Sorry. Let me just discard that. Notice I tried to start the note-taking app with the pen. If you do that, all it's doing is actually taking a snapshot. You actually have to start the pen-enabled note-taking app with your finger. <laughs> okay. It's backed by Evernote. So I have an Evernote account and I'm going to log into it right now. I'm going to take it off the screen. So I think I can remember my password, hopefully. Bum, -ba -bum, -ba bum And for those of you that haven't used Evernote, you should check it out because it's a really nice way to, to basically uh, Put stuff into the store stuff into the cloud and share it with other devices. Um, Evernote also does uh, backend um, OCR, optical character re recognition. So things like business cards and stuff like that get uh, character recognized. Uh, you can also search through stuff as well. And I think you get the basic account on this. You don't get the full offline capability. You'll have to to stump up for a full Evernote account. But can you see what's happening now in the background? My notes that were stored in the cloud, uh, stored offline, are now available for me to use. So the interesting thing is using the pen in Evernote. 
So you've got a number of things you can do. Of course you can type. Yeah, no problem there. Um, I can type stuff in there. What I can do then is also select that text. So you can use it as a selection or highlight, sorry, highlight the text, not selecting the text. It's slightly different uh, by pressing the bottom button. So highlight by pressing the bottom button. Um, you actually have to unhighlight it. I think you press it with your finger and then unhighlight. Or, yeah, unhighlight. Yeah, like that. If you don't press a button, you're into scribble mode. Uh, and you can also use the eraser there. So what you can do is, let's pick a pen, let's pick a color. We'll use uh, blue and we'll have a fairly thick pen. Uh, I'm left-handed, so this is going to look terrible. Right. Now you want to know whether it's responsive, right? So there is a slight lag. Um, the pen lags the sorry the line lags the pen by up to one centimeter if you're moving fast like that uh, which actually means that it's a little bit off putting in putting in text it's just not as fast as it should be uh, those of you that have experienced uh, win good Windows 7 handwriting recognition will will know what it's all about and this will disappoint you um, so it does lag a little bit having said that I'm getting used to it and I can do a little bit of note taking on this what you can't do though and what I thought would be quite cool is to zoom in on the page uh, so that you can get a little bit more accuracy uh, when you're doing small text because it's not that cool for doing small text let me just uh, zoom in a little bit on that for you uh, so there uh, in addition you can do and now I'm gonna have to use my finger to do other functions here uh, like taking a picture for example let's uh, take a picture of the uh, camera here that will go into the note there it is of course I can now do stuff with that and uh, I can also do an audio note um, here we go that's recording now this is an audio note in Evernote stop and play yep that's played back and you can also link it with a calendar item so if you want to link it uh, with with an event in the future or the past you you can Oops, let's just go back to that and that is it so go back to my notes that note will be saved into the cloud here's some other stuff that I've had in the past going back months um, so that's really useful. Evernote is useful, no doubt about it. The pen, pen adds a little bit of value as in a sort of annotation sort of way. So that's the notes apps. Uh, let me just quickly scan for questions. But, uh, Guy, if you drop them into the uh, Skype channel, that would be helpful. Um, let's go on to the second app. And the second app is uh, PDF uh, annotations. Now this isn't scribbling over a PDF or a copy of a... Uh, um, a copy of a uh, PDF, uh, like a JPEG res re uh, representation. Oh, I need to put a file there. I did have some files. Have I got some files? Please, please. No, I haven't. Right. Let me just let me just drop a uh, PDF file over to the device. We should be able to do that via. Um, Bluetooth. So here's a quick demo of our Bluetooth capabilities. So I need to go into. I was going to set all this up beforehand, but then I thought, no, it'd be better to show it from scratch. So obviously you're going to have to uh, bear with a bit of this uh, messing around. Bluetooth discoverable. Let me go to files on the Galaxy Tab. Oh, where I should have some PDFs, and now fire one over. After the PDF stuff, I'll show you um, what I think is the highlight actually, and that's the the Kobo reader. I can think of some really great applications for that one. Okay, okay, okay. Um, download. Nope. I want to go to the SD card. B. 
bear with me. I've got a couple of PDFs. I'm going to fire over. Right. Where are you? Right. How about a recipe for coronation chicken? <laughs> Which was actually grabbed from the Guardian newspaper. Going to send it via Bluetooth. Oh, I need to take flight mode off here. And put Bluetooth on. Send via Bluetooth. Right, we probably need to. Pair, accept, accept, and then we have incoming file, accept, and that is now being sent over. Right, back to the device itself and back to the PDF reader. So this is the built-in PDF reader. It's called PDF Viewer and it's got an icon that looks exactly like a Foxit reader. So I'm guessing Foxit did this. Which isn't a bad thing at all. So, PDF Viewer. Here we go. Downloads. Bluetooth. Coronation Chicken. And if you don't know what Coronation Chicken is, then you're obviously not English. Right then. Ah, yeah. Is this going to be a textual PDF or a, well, we'll find out. So, just a couple of pages of PDF going on here. Um, what I'm going to do now is try and use the pen to to highlight something. There we go. So, what I've done is use the pen to highlight some text there. Now, can I select that text and copy it out? Um, not as far as I know. So you can't actually take that text and copy. All you're doing is highlighting something in the PDF. And as far as I know, this PDF is not without any, um, it wasn't created with any restrictions. So what all you can really do is um, highlight something. But what you can also do then is uh, use the pen um, and uh, do your usual annotations. So this is not a JPEG that I'm annotating now. It's a PDF. So what I could actually do, and I, and I do do fairly often for my accountant, is sign PDFs. Um, so let's just get to a uh, page. I'm going to sign this. Right, now that, if I go to the menu, I can save it. But I can also s flatten the file down to uh, one level, a one level PDF, or I can save the stuff in a separate layer on the PDF. So presumably PDF support multi-layer stuff. I didn't know that, but uh, that's what you can do there. So effectively you're creating uh, an annotated PDF. So that's a bit more than scribbling. And some of you guys will know how useful that is in certain sort of business scenarios. Um, I also need to mention that, for example, Adobe Reader won't let you do that. So if I go to Adobe Reader now, and we go to the same file, what happens when I press the screen? It takes a screenshot, and the only thing I can do is work with the screenshot, because it doesn't support the pen. So then you're, you're working with a single page JPEG, and then you have to, you can't turn that back into a PDF with, with real text in it. So bear that in mind, right? Okay, so that's PDF annotations. Now, let's go to the books. This is cool. I like this a lot. I think it's uh, it's got some really good uses. I think if I had been a student, uh, if, if the HTC Flyer had been around when I was a student, I would have seriously considered this as a uh, for, um, for my work. Right, I'm going to go to books, which is, um, well, it's also actually on one of the, pages here, here we go. Right, Tale of Two Cities. So this is Kobo, Kobo Reader. Um, so it has a, um, a library. I've got stuff that I've used in Kobo. Those of you that use the Galaxy Tab will have used Kobo as well. 
uh, page turning a um, couple of things to mention about the actual book reader itself there seems to be a lot of space a lot of margins around the text doesn't look very efficient at all uh, small, let's go to smallest text size and you'll see this, the margins are still there there's in my opinion a little bit too much margin um, although it does I guess give you some frame to hold the device with uh, and still read read um, I don't know if you can change the margins anyway you got lovely you know page turn effect which of course is very very important but let's get into the uh, the pen feature so Kobo has been rewritten as a pen enabled application so what you can do here is I press the select button now and I can select something here right I'm just gonna select that what I'm gonna do now is select it with my finger I'm gonna add a note to that selected thing what I can do is I can type characters or I can also make annotations scribbles in the note we s just go back now and that note then gets kind of bookmarked against the highlighted section here so I can just click on that with my finger not with the pen and then see the note you can also scribble over the actual PDF itself you can bring up the uh, pen selector here uh, choose your pen so you might want to highlight something uh, you might want to uh, rub it out of course you've got the, the rubber on here anyway um, and you might want to uh, you know I mean do stuff with the page right so those uh, are saved within I guess a separate layer within the book right um, so when you re-download the book maybe you lose those I don't know but I think that's really cool you can imagine having uh, textbooks in, in Kobo and doing this sort of stuff and you can just very very easily highlight stuff and you know um, add notes scribble you can't then send this to other people but you uh, you do have a, a record of it yourself so that I think is uh, I think that's great I think that's one of the um, most powerful kind of reading applications I've I've seen on on tablets on uh, recent tablets um, it's really nicely integrated it's co small and compact it works the pen is simple You've got to remember to take the pen with you of course and uh, it just leaves you to focus on the job in hand of, of, of your research so that is uh, cooly 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 I think uh, <laughs> I want to show you the the last uh, app now that's pen enabled and then we'll stop this session we'll go into uh, part three I might actually drop the bitrate of the stream down a couple of people uh, mo are moaning about dropouts of the the stream but let's just quickly show you the gallery here um, because the gallery is also uh, pen enabled go to gallery we should have a picture or two in there okay uh, and so let's just bring up what the camera shot we did uh, basically you can draw on the JPEG it doesn't take a snapshot of course it's already a snapshot um, but then you know you can use the, the pens and highlight stuff and erase you can't do selecting but you can do erasing and then you can uh, hit the share button and send those JPEGs off as well. It's pretty simple. It's almost like screen grab, but uh, it's kind of in integrated nicely. That is the uh, the fourth of the four apps that I know of so far that are truly pen enabled. If anyone knows anything else about pen enabled apps on the HTC Fly, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear if you've. Uh, if you've had experiences uh, with it um, let me just now go to chat and the questions that uh, Guy has picked up during the chat session I'll quickly ask those will will it charge from USB um, well I haven't tested that to be honest right now but uh, we're gonna do it right now I'm gonna plug USB in see what happens and watch you go up in smoke um, so five volt input let's see what happens so it's showing charge only yeah it does charge I've had this before allows you to do charge only um, HTC sync uh, disk drives so or mass storage USB tethering and internet pass through as well and you can set those to default so it is charging now it'll be charging at a very very slow rate uh, 500 milliamps could take sort of eight nine hours to charge that but uh, 
overnight charging that might be kind of cool if you need to do it off your laptop or something like that that works so USB charging works um, do you want the take on the micro USB HDMI connection uh, guy if you've got more info yeah pass it through now uh, other questions what version of gingerbread is it using 233 or 234 I understood it was uh, 234 I'm gonna double check that for you right now it is two three one second that's two three three I thought it was two three four so that's another lie I thought they were putting out two three four because I thought two three four had the Skype video support which now that explains why Skype video doesn't work on here it's another thing that doesn't work by the way they talked about earlier HTC uh, so two three three at the moment next question is the talk app the video enabled version no it's not there's no video enabled gtalk or skype app would a bluetooth headset work for voice presume this means voice over ip yes you'd be ending up with voice over ip it just doesn't look like the voice stack is built into this in question do the annotations you enter into books sync to kobo's online service and down to other kobo enabled devices that's a superb question um, um, so i can do that because earlier i was i was messing around with a book um, i don't think it will will do but let, let's just check because i do have kobo enabled on the galaxy tab if i go to uh, readers hub Go to Kobo, and oh, I might need to put in my account details again. Let's just do that. Uh, right. Let's see. So that's an interesting question. I don't, I can't imagine that it will upload to Kobo. I'm just not sure that uh, Kobo supports this extra layer of of information on a book. Would be, and I don't think they have the set up to store all that sort of stuff anyway. In terms of you know data storage, I'm just um, going to my books now. Go to my library. Updating Cobra Library. Interesting that one of the books is now re-downloading. Oh no, that was that's yeah, okay. Let's see what happens here. That was a good good question. So let's see. Because bookmarks I think get synced, don't they? Start reading. I think Kobo on the Galaxy Tab is slightly more space 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 efficient. Right. Let me have a look at the bookmarks annotations. Interesting. It you can actually of course highlight in the Kobo app normally using your finger doesn't show me doesn't say that I've got any annotations in this book so far just doing one more check doesn't look like it um, no so it doesn't look like it on first glance next question uh, Ben can you shoot a photo note in the note taking app and annotate the picture with a pen I think we did that yeah so yes you can cool alright so that's uh, the end of part two of the HSC flyer live session uh, recording and then um, We'll go into part three. In part three, I want to look at the browser, I want to look at media, I want to look at performance. So if you're watching this on, on YouTube or Ustream.tv, check out part three of the video right now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for everyone for joining in the, uh, in the chat room. Stay tuned in the chat room.